Abraham Lincoln was born on February 12, 1809, in Kentucky. This book is about him. Abraham Lincoln, written by Amy L. Cohn and Susie Schmidt. Pictures by David A. Johnson. Amy Cohn and Susie Schmidt worked together on another wonderful book, From Sea to Shining Sea, A Treasury of American Folklore and Folk Songs. They both have worked in the uh, book industry for a long time. David Johnson uh, won the Connecticut Book Award for this book about Abraham Lincoln, but has been a productive artist all his life um, with many other endeavors. You can follow this link to a website and learn more about his work. See that tall, tall man in that tall black hat? Know who he is? That's right. He's the man on the American penny. Abraham Lincoln, 16th President of the United States of America. Was he always that way? Straight as an arrow, tall as a tree, serious as can be? Let's go back. Let's go back a ways and see. Look, in the cradle. See the baby? That's Abraham Lincoln, born on a corn husk mattress one cold Kentucky morning. Big sister Sarah stands beside her new brother, waiting for him to grow. Mm, and grow he did. From the first, Abraham was big. Long shanks, they called him. And all his life, his knees and nose got a little too friendly every time he sat down. He's a boy of seven now. My, he's strong. Strong enough to plow and plant alongside his pappy. Strong enough to swing an ax. Strong enough to help when the family moved to the new state of Indiana. That first winter, the Lincolns huddled in a half-faced camp. Just three walls and a roaring fire between them, the panther, the wolf, and the bear. Those days, you could touch a tree with every step, even if you walked a week. Abe knew that. He swung and swung his axe. The blade bit through white oak and sycamore. The felled timber became a cabin and a barn. The cleared land, pastures, and fields. Lots of those trees, lots and lots of them, made split rail fences. Horse high, bull strong, pig tight. Years later, Abe looked like those rails, worn and rugged, long and lean and lined. But not yet. No, not yet. School? Wasn't much time for that. Abe did go, by littles, he said. A day here, a week there, maybe a year, all told. He learned to figure, to read, and to write. That's my name, he showed Cousin Dennis with a grin. Doesn't look a bit like me, does it? Abe listened eagerly when Mother Nancy shared the Bible's treasures or his daddy told a favorite yarn. He could recite a preacher's sermon word for word, act it out, too. He lay awake nights, worrying unfamiliar ideas until he got them right, and for good. Enjoyed arithmetic, so he covered the cabin walls a time or two with his reckonings. In the sad, sad time after his mother died, eased when his new stepmother urged him to satisfy his appetite for reading everything and anything, whenever he could. Abraham read about Aesop's animals and Aladdin's lamp and Robinson Crusoe's shipwreck. He read about George Washington, our first president. He read while the plow horse rested. He read while he ate his lunch. Late at night, he leaned toward the dying light of the fire with a book in his hand. My friends, the one who has a book, I ain't read yet, he said. And he'd walk miles for the chance to borrow something new. 
Abe was 18 before the chance came to see someplace new. He and a pal floated a flatboat filled with pork, flour, meal, bacon, and potatoes down the Ohio River, down the Mississippi River, down to New Orleans. For the first time, Abraham saw men, women, and children sold like cattle from one owner to another. That was the way with slaves. What could he do? Not a thing. Not then, anyway. Abe was 21, a man grown, when his father moved the family to Illinois. Abe saw his parents settled, said his goodbyes, and set off across the prairie to the new town of New Salem, hard by the Sangamon River. There, folks with big plans for the future offered a place for a young man to make his way in the world. What did he do in New Salem? <laughs> what didn't he do? He ran a shop, but Mr. A. Lincoln told funny stories a whole lot better than he sold seeds and saleratus, and soon that shop winked out. Abraham studied surveying and served as a soldier. He roamed the roads delivering mail. He even minded babies. For fun, he joined the debating society and learned to convince others to come round to his way of thinking. Work, 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 that's the main thing, he once told an acquaintance, and he worked as hard with his head as ever he had with his hands. People liked the strapping, striving young Lincoln. Oh, Abe's pants were short, his hands big as shovels. Can't think anyone would have called him handsome. But when he ran for state legislature, those who knew him gave him their votes. He lost, but that didn't much matter. Abe had struck upon the life for him. He'd be a legislator and a lawyer, too. He won the next three elections to the state assembly. Time to make the Illinois capital home for good. In Springfield, Lincoln practiced law in a roomy office overlooking the center of town. Every morning, he'd hoist his big boots atop his desk and read the newspaper, out loud. Sometimes, he'd pluck a paper from the mess, tuck it inside his hat, and race to the courthouse. Carry a satchel? Why bother? Abe kept his papers safe and dry up top. Abe met and married Mary Todd, smart and sassy. Lincoln towered over his tiny bride. We're the long and short of it, the proud groom quipped. The couple bought a handsome house on Jackson Street, where they would treasure not one, not two, not three, but four baby boys. Half a year, Lincoln worked the county courthouses, riding the circuit, they called it. Didn't bother him spending nights two or three to a bed, nor having but a minute to confer with a client. And in the evenings, when judge and juror, lawyer and defendant, would crowd round the tavern fire, Abe kept them laughing till their bellies ached. That puts me in mind of the time I was walking along a dusty road and a farmer in his wagon passed by, Lincoln began. Would you be good enough to take my overcoat to town for me? I asked. The farmer agreed. But how will you get it back? No trouble at all, I said. I'm going to stay right inside. Mr. Lincoln also relished the travel between times. Gave him room to think. Now look at Abraham, all dressed up and on his way to the White House. Abe had tried and failed to win a United States Senate seat. But by golly, the speeches he gave about slavery and the country's future made him so famous that he found himself elected president just two years later. It was time to bid farewell to his friends and to Springfield. To this place and the kindness of these people, I owe everything, he told the crowd gathered at the depot. He asked for God's assistance and their prayers. 
Then he boarded a train headed east. A powerful, hard task lay ahead. The United States weren't united anymore. Some in the southern states disagreed so strongly with how much say-so the federal government should have. They formed their own country. They were concerned particularly with the right to keep slaves. A house divided against itself cannot stand, Lincoln believed. No government could endure half-slave and half-free. It will be one thing or the other, he said. Only war would decide, and Lincoln knew it. Leading a nation at war was the hardest task of all his life. People died, too many to count. President Lincoln grieved each one. Sometimes I think I'm the tiredest man on earth, Mr. Lincoln said, and he probably was. He slept in snatches, walking the streets at night, stopping by the telegraph office at all hours for the latest news. He comforted wounded soldiers from both sides and visited every Sunday with citizens desperate for information about loved ones. Sometimes he turned up at meetings wearing slippers. His feet ached so. He often began by reading to his advisors from joke books. With the fearful strain that is upon me night and day, if I did not laugh, I should die, he told them. His boys made him laugh, too. He tussled with them on the White House floors and let them keep goats on the South Lawn. Once he wrote an official presidential pardon for their pet turkey. Wouldn't do for Tom to become Thanksgiving dinner. After nearly two years of war, Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, declaring all slaves free. If my name ever goes into history, it will be for this act, he said, and my whole soul is in it. Abraham Lincoln, he wrote slowly and carefully, for his hand was swollen and sore from greeting hundreds of New Year's Day callers. Later, some urged the president to take back the proclamation. Lincoln refused. I am a slow walker, he said, but I never walk backward. The bloody battles wore on. Lincoln seethed. In his youth, he has wrestled enough to know you had to fight a foe and finish him off, too. Finally, Lincoln chose General Ulysses S. Grant to lead the Union troops. Unconditional surrender, they called Grant, and Grant would fight to win. A year later, the war was over. The Union was preserved. Let us bind up the nation's wounds, Lincoln said, and he meant it. Mr. Lincoln could only begin the healing. Five short days after the Confederate surrender, an angry Southerner shot the president as the Lincolns watched a play. They took Abraham across the street and laid him on a corn husk mattress. In a few hours, he was dead. A train slowly carried Mr. Lincoln home to Springfield. The train stopped 15 times. Each time, thousands gathered to mourn the last great casualty of the war. More people stood along the tracks, silent and solemn, as the barefoot backwoods boy, now grown, now gone, went past. Look, there's Mr. Lincoln, there, in the building made for him. He sits quietly, eyes steady, knees high. Imagine, all his life he was so busy he barely had time to take a haircut. Now he rests. He looks like a giant, doesn't he? He was. The End on the left side of the page, you can see some important dates from Abraham Lincoln's life. And on the right side, you see um, the website for the Lincoln Memorial. 
Here's the link you can follow. It is, of course, in Washington, D.C., and a place uh, visitors always come to. The 12th of February is Lincoln's birthday. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books that have been written about Abraham Lincoln. He is a very important figure for the people who live in the United States and people all around the world know his story and know the work that he did. This book has been Abraham Lincoln, written by Amy Cohn and Susie Schmidt, with the illustrations all drawn by David A. Johnson.